If you've just joined us, you're watching Newslink on DSTV Channel 403 now. Yanush Valush has to be released by Thursday. It's unclear whether he will be as he's receiving medical attention after being stabbed in prison. It's also not clear if he will serve his parole in South Africa or Poland. Home Affairs has granted him permanent residency for his parole period, but his lawyer says the move is unlawful and Valush should be deported. Let's get some clarity from constitutional law expert Michael Osborne. Mr. Osborne, good morning and thank you very much for your time. You know, there's a lot of confusion around this particular matter, especially the granting of that permanent residence or exemption, if you will, because when reading just the section, it starts by stating that this is upon application where the minister would then grant the exemption. But in this instance, we're hearing from Yanush Valush's lawyer that there was no application brought by his client. So what exactly could have happened here? And is it legally permissible? Good morning to you. <clears throat> yes, it is an unusual situation. Um, what uh, Mr. Wadush has been granted is normally um, something that one would apply for uh, because you deem it to be in your interests. You apply for something that you want. You don't apply uh, to have something imposed upon you that you don't want. Now, as I understand it, um, Mr. Walush's desire is to serve out his parole in South Africa. I'm, I'm sorry, um, in Poland, his, yes. his home country. Um, he lost his South African uh, passport. He had uh, dual citizenship uh, when he was sentenced. So in principle, he's not permitted to stay in South Africa upon having been released. He must go back to Poland. Mm -hmm. So the minister, it seems, has tried to uh, solve this problem by imposing upon Mr. Walush a benefit, so-called, which he doesn't want. Yes. Uh, uh, th that then leaves us in an interesting and difficult situation, which may well lead, uh, lead uh, back to the courtroom. Mm -hmm. oh, because that's, that was actually going to be my next question, that in this instance then, there might be an imminent court challenge on the side of uh, Yanush Valush to say that I did not apply and I have no desire to be in the country. But then the broader question is, why wouldn't have Home Affairs brought this before the Constitutional Court, whatever issue they would have if he were to be granted parole? That in most instances, one needs to be in the magisterial area for them to ensure that they actually stick to the parole conditions, which would be possibly impossible if he's in Poland. So why didn't they bring these submissions for consideration before the parole was granted, and especially only giving them 10 days to prepare? Um, I don't know why they failed to raise this um, at an earlier stage, but I can speculate that, remember, this started back in 2017 in the High Court, this particular application. Um, that was long before it was anticipated that he might ultimately be granted parole. So one can perhaps forgive the government for not anticipating the day when this would ultimately be in the Constitutional Court five and a half years later, and the Constitutional Court would um, indeed say that he needed to be granted parole. Secondly, when one is talking about where the parole will be served, that's normally part of the parole conditions. And the minister has a discretion to impose whatever parole conditions he deems fit. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that simply was not part of the whole debate starting in 2017, which had nothing to do with the conditions of his parole but simply with the antecedent question of whether he would get parole at all. Mm -hmm. I love that you're so generous in saying that perhaps we should forgive government for not anticipating, because one would think as leaders they should have the foresight to say when one comes before the court, a ruling could go either way. So one should have thought they would have prepared for this and brought submissions before the court to say it impacts not just uh, Yanush Valush, but the correctional services who must prepare and also home affairs themselves because of the documentation that uh, was lacking in this instance because he's not a permanent resident. So what happens now? Come tomorrow, 
would he be somebody that can then just leave and go to Poland? Um, it depends upon the parole uh, conditions which are imposed. And to my knowledge, parole conditions have not yet been imposed. We'd have to read what those parole conditions were. And it may well be that it will be stated that he must serve out his parole in a particular magisterial district. Mm -hmm. um, it, and if, if that's what it says, no doubt one can expect uh, Mr. Walush's lawyers to say, well, um, that is a meaningless or indeed unlawful condition uh, to require that I serve out my parole in a particular magisterial district because I'm not permitted to be in the country in the first instance. Hmm. And that, to that, the minister will have the response, well, aha, I have anticipated that by granting you the right to stay in the country as a permanent resident, mm -hmm. resident and for the first time as your, um, you've served your parole. And then so Mr. Valouche says, it, it's a tit for tat, because after that aha moment, then you have Mr. Valouche saying, aha, I didn't apply for it. So this is procedurally unfair, because that section 31, subsection 2B, specifically states that upon application. So meaning they're probably headed to court tomorrow. Nobody will possibly be released. It's probably going to be a bit more court, court action. Well, in the event that Mr. Walush is released tomorrow or next week or whenever he's able to be discharged from hospital, um, it may be that he will head straight for the airport. Uh, the problem is, uh, what travel document will he use? Uh, I don't know whether his Polish passport uh, is still valid. It probably is not. It probably would need to be renewed. So there'd be a practical problem in him leaving the country. If indeed it appeared that he was about to leave the country and the minister stuck to his guns and wanted to impose a parole condition that he must serve out that uh, parole in South Africa, then uh, the minister would need to bring an urgent application uh, requiring him to stay within the jurisdiction until such time as the debate about uh, his parole conditions had been concluded. Hmm. What a legal quagmire they find themselves in. Mr. Osborne, thank you very much for your insights this morning. That's constitutional law expert Michael Osborne.